My name is Lillian Groves, and I am, I've been a senior guide in this cathedral for 30 years. But I'm going to talk about the Galilee Chapel, which is my favourite part of the church. When you enter the cathedral at the moment, you come into the Galilee Chapel. It's called the Galilee Chapel because when this was a Benedictine monastery, before the great Sunday services, the monks would gather in this chapel and make their way through the Great West Halls to celebrate the High Mass, the Sunday High Mass. At the end of the service, they would come back into the Galilee. Now this reflects on the fact that Jesus came out of Galilee and he told his disciples after the resurrection, go into Galilee and I'll meet you there. So the monks were sort of going through the story. But when you come in, don't just walk through it. Stop and look. The architecture is stunning. This chapel was built maybe 40 years after the finishing of the great Romanesque nave. Oh, Romanesque architecture had got a little bit, well, old-fashioned by then. So here we have much splendour pillars. Have a look. Originally, there were only two columns in here. The sandstone ones were pretty sure were added in the 14th century. So it would have looked even lighter. But the arches are pure Romanesque. Look at the fabulous chevron or, or zigzag design. Some visitors suggest that this could be Moorish. When I went to the great a mosque, the huge mosque in Cordoba in Spain, I stood stuck still and I said, this is the Galilee Chapel writ large. If you look to your left, you will see a medieval money box or safe. This is where women could make their offerings to St. Cuthbert when they weren't allowed to come into this monastic church. But they could come into this chapel. Then, just look at the, the alcohol on either side of that um, money box and you'll see a painting of a bishop and a king. They date from the 12th century. Almost everybody believes that the painting of the bishop is in Cuthbert and opposite him is King Oswald, the king of Northumbria who brought Christians from Iona, Aden and his monks to convert the people of Northumbria to Christianity. Then if you look up over the arcade, you will see paintings from the 13th century. I'm not going to tell you all about those now, but if you look at the centre, there is Christ on the cross with the Virgin Mary and St John on either side. And then on either side of that image, you see the disciples undergoing terrible martyrdom. If there's a Scot watching, over on the arcade, there's a painting of St Andrew on the diagonal cross. Now, a few years ago, I was talking with some scholars from Edinburgh University, and they reckon this is the oldest image of Andrew on the diagonal cross in Britain. And that, of course, is what gives Scotland its salt hair. Walk a little further along, you will see a wonderful modern sculpture. It's called the Annunciation, and it's by a Polish sculptor called Joseph Piers. We got it in the 1990s. If you look at her face, it's so calm and accepting. But if you look at the back of her neck, it's full of the most incredible tension. It was a moment of decision. She could have said no. There's lots more to see here, but one of the things that you mustn't miss is Bede's tomb. The tomb that you see just as you're about to leave the chapel, on it it says, Hac sunt in fossa, beda venerabilis ossa. In this grave lie the bones of the worthy Bede. That's a loose translation. I'm going to talk about Bede at length presently. Just for the moment, look up at the 
great memorial behind Bede's tomb. It says in Latin and then in English, Christ is the morning star who in the night of this world is past brings to his saints the promise of the light of life and opens everlasting day. Thank you.